The message that I want to share with you today is all lives matter. Many of us saw the story unfold in America in the last couple of months when a black man was taken into custody by four policemen. And we saw how these four policemen took this man uh, to the ground and, and with a brutal force they kept him there. And unfortunately he died a horrific death. In the last couple of weeks also uh, I've seen the, the racial confrontation and the uprise that, that, that happened in Free State in the town of Senegal. And we've seen there, after the killing of a, of a white man by blacks, how there was this protest that stood up and there was this, this conflict that was starting also in South Africa again. There was a spotlight that was on this age-old fight between black and white. The situation was that a, that a man was killed on a farm. He was a white man. And it was black men that killed him. And so on, you know, the white and the black issue is again just fueled in our country and quite across the globe. A fight that is from ancient of times. This fight between light and darkness. In biblical times, we saw the fight between Israel and and the, and the heathen nations. In America, between white and black. In South Africa, between the Bura Nazi and the black nation. And even us, if we go to town today, you know, we could be confronted with the same issue in the same situation ourselves, or we could be witnesses every day, even in our streets. Like the other day, I went to a shop, and as I exited the shop my, where my car was parked, another car was blocking it, and I was wondering what was going on, and I got into my car, and then I, my eye caught a young man coming out of the, exiting that car and coming to the vehicle right next to me. The vehicle that was parked next to me, the man was still sitting in the car and the, this young man approached him and he, and he started to shout and, and, and talk very loudly towards this man. And he was angry because of the way that this man um, came into the parking area and nearly struck his car. And he was telling me what he was going to do, what we would have done if this and that happened. The black man got out of the car and he was very sorry about what happened. But this young white man wasn't up for it. He was ready for a fight and he didn't like the response of this black man. He wanted him to retaliate, but he didn't. And this young man started to, to use language that was very foul. And, and, I, and I felt so bad for this black man. And then as this young man was going on, I felt so ashamed for being white. I turned towards the white man because I couldn't take it anymore. And I, and, and I just reached, you know, with my voice to him and I said, young man, this man has said he's sorry. Wouldn't you forgive him? Can't we just go on? He turned towards me and said, who asked you, preacher? Well, luckily we could just end it there. But all these stories, if it is in America and South Africa and wherever it is, it is about the conflict between white and black And politicians know how to get on this train and use it to their benefit. They get on this train um, and build a case even stronger and bigger for what they stand for. And and they tell their voters and they tell those that they want to bring on board, what are they going to do with these other people on the other side of the fence of sort? And then obviously, the people on the other side, you know, they feel emotionally attacked. They feel personally attacked. And now you get the situation where it is fueled and racism just fuels the the feeling that people have against each other, especially in our country. And if we as leaders and shepherds, and I I speak specifically to ministers, you know, if we are going to help our people to live from from the truth, we, we need to help them to see the lies of Satan. And the lies that come through people, the lies that come through politicians, the lies that come through through these kind of things that happen in our world every day. We must help our people to understand these traps because it's a trap. And and because it captures your heart and it keeps you in bondage because it's not the truth, it's a lie. And God doesn't want us to live there. God wants his people to live free. See, the enemy wants us to to take these lies on board and it becomes a truth to us. And we as a church, we must help our people to distinguish between what is truth and what. What What are the lies See, we as Christians, we live in this world, but we live as if not from this world. 
You know, we must approach the world every day. We must approach all people every day. Everywhere we go, we must approach people from from God's perspective, from a biblical perspective, from a kingdom perspective. We must understand what's going on around us and not see people through the lies that come through the enemy. You see, Bible-believing Christians, they live from the truth of God. And we must teach our people biblical truth. We must help people to live from the perspective of God towards all people, every nation. We must help our people to live from that perspective. We must help our people to live from a a biblical perspective and not from a type of godliness, not from their own doctrine. We must give them the correct doctrine. We must help people not to live from just a religious, from being religious. We must help our people not to live from our church's doctrine. We must help our people to live from a biblical doctrine. We must help our people to live as God's people with God's perspective and God's truth in their heart. And Jesus is our example. Jesus is the example that came to live and show us God's heart. To show us God's heart towards all people. That He is a God that loves. That He is a God that that loves those that are His enemies. But He confronts them with the truth. That is how Jesus lived. And we must teach our people to follow Jesus' doctrine, to follow Jesus' lifestyle, to follow His example. You see, Jesus came to show us that, they, that God makes no distinction between people. He made no distinction between Jew and Samaritan. He made no distinction between a tax collector and a fisherman. He made no distinction between men and women. Jesus came to show us God love that loves all people, but lives by the truth. For us, it's sometimes difficult to love our enemies. It's difficult to love people that, that stand up against us, that stand up against our people, that stand up maybe, maybe against my family and do wrong towards us. But we must le- learn to live like Jesus did. For whatever people do, we must learn to live like Jesus. Jesus that, that as people attacked He he kept on fulfilling God's purpose in his life. He didn't allow the enemy to take his eye off the purpose and of God's love for people. The enemy knows how to keep our eyes off what God wants to do. And we must learn to live through these attacks wherever we are, in whatever season of life and whatever um, place on earth we are at. We must learn to live from God's perspective into the purpose that He has for us. And we must not allow the enemy to bring lies in our life so that we lost, lose track of what God wants to do. You see, the enemy is very effective. The enemy is effective to keep Christians busy with the things that we see, with the things that we feel, and, 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 and we allow those things to capture our attention, to capture our heart, to capture our time. And we miss living for the purpose that God has placed His church on earth. And the church is actually very, very ineffective of representing God and showing God's love towards all people. And that's what we are to do. We are here to show God's love. We are here to show God's mercies. We are here to to live out from this place of receiving God's grace. And we go with a message to people of God's grace. and, and, And we help people to be reconciled with God. You know, we are people that are called to be reconcilers. Reconcilers to God. And we help people to also reconcile with other people. We can only be successful in this if we as ministers and as teachers in whatever leadership role you play, where you influence someone else, you're a leader. You are discipling people. If it's one, you are a leader of that person. And we can only help people to walk in this biblical perspective on God's path for their life if we teach them the truth and to distinguish between truth and lies. We must help our church in a time such as this to live from God's perspective, from the truth. So what is the truth? Is the truth that all black people hate white people? Is the truth that all white people hate all black people? Is the truth that white people are better than black people? Is the truth that God made all people in His image? 
That is the truth I believe. What is the truth that you are teaching people? What is it, the truth that we are teaching our people? What's the doctrine that we live by? What is the, the, the lifestyle that people can follow by looking at us? Our should, concern should be to help our people to have an understanding of biblical doctrine. To help our people have a revelation of God's love for all people. Because the enemy is only, only going to try and help our people li- um, 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 believe lies. If we take um, the, the, the George Floyd case, you know, there is a reality. Our people live in a reality daily. And the enemy uses the realities in which we live to put lies in our life. The reality that we have to distinguish between and the truth is so important. Because the realities we are feeling and we are experiencing it daily as we live. So in the George Floyd case, you know, the reality is, is that the black man was killed, uh, was, died because of four policemen. The, the lie is, is that policemen in America wants to kill black people. The lie is that white policemen hate black people. And that is a lie. The truth is, is that God loves those four policemen. And that God loved that black man, George Floyd. That is the truth. The truth is that God hates sin. But He loves sinners. That is the truth. And that is why Jesus came. But Jesus came to show that love to the whole world. And that is why God gave His Son so that every person forever can settle in his heart God's love for Him and for other people. And we should settle that for our people. In the cynical case, the reality is is that a white man was killed by black men. The lie is that blacks hate whites. That all blacks in South Africa hate all white people. The lie is, is that all white people hate black people. (laughs) The reality is, is that in South Africa, many white people treat black people very disrespectfully. The reality is, is that many black people people in South Africa suffered under apartheid. The reality is that many black people now are, 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 are living a reversed racism towards white people. And now we should know that the truth is, is that many people live across the globe with hate in their heart. Many people's hearts are hardened. Many people's hearts are hardened for many reasons. And we must understand that that truth is, for, is, is, is such an important thing for the church to understand. You see, Jesus loved Judas, he, even in, he, he brought him into his inner circle and he loved him. But the truth is that Judas sold Jesus for a few sins, just as people with hardened hearts will kill someone for just a few bucks. They will kill someone just for a cell phone. It is just a reality these days. But Jesus loved Judas. And the truth is that God loves the murderer as he loves the murdered. And it is important for us to understand that, that these things that we, that we experience as, 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 as realities in our life, they should not cause us to start to believe lies and wrong things. We must teach our people from God's perspective. Otherwise, our people live with a half a doctrine, with a wrong doctrine about God. And they actually don't know God. See, God is love. God loves sinners. God does not condemn sinners. And sinners are not the enemy of the church. Sinners, people that murder, are not the enemy of Christians. They are those that we are to love and to show God's love towards. The real enemy, friends, is Satan. The real enemy is Satan and the forces of darkness. 
And what Satan does is he captures the heart of people. He, 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 broke the, he breaks their hearts. And he causes brokenness in people's lives. He causes addictions. He causes that, 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 that families will, will, will break up. And he will cause that children will grow up in families without fathers. And he will cause children's hearts to be broken. And the enemy will capture those children. And he will use them. He will use them against other people. And it will cause hatred. And if it's a black person against a white person, it will cause racism. I want to tell you a story about Dominikasi Karstens. Dominikasi Karstens, a well-known uh, theologian and a pastor, a reverend in South Africa, is also a teacher. And, and, and he regularly goes into Africa to teach African people. And, and, and what he, he wrote about once when he went into a refugee camp in Nyagarusu to go and teach the people, to go and inspire the people. And, uh, and, and he came there and he, and he said to himself, how can I teach these people? How can I be a person that can teach these people if I come from such a middle class and comfortable situation in my country? He just, he just felt that how God was working with him. So what he did was he allowed Paul to teach from the prison letters. And Paul ministered. But as he got to the end of this uh, week of teaching there to inspire the people and to build them up, and that was his, his focus, God said to him, you are not here, Kasi, to teach. You are here to actually learn. So we arranged at the last day to, to interview a few people. And, and in front of him came to, to sit uh, the first black man. And this man was sitting there and he, and he had this heroic, strong, um, uh, full of faith character and look in his eyes. And, and, and Kasi was sort of taken off guard, you know, that, that people living in this place had this strong character and they, 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 they looked and he experienced such faith with them. And he, and he started to speak to the man and he said, how did it happen that, that you, that you are, don't live in your country, you are out of your country, you're in a refugee camp and you're without family, you know, what happened? And this man across the table looked him in the eye and he said, it was one day, like any other day, in the village where I lived. I was the, the, the leader in the village. I was also the pastor of the local church. And the next moment, young men came, came in with their, with their guns and with their pangas. And they rounded up the whole town. And everybody had to stand in a, in a long queue from the youngest to the oldest. And I was the oldest and I was standing on that side. And on this side, a young boy of six years was the first one. And they grabbed the young boy and they took him and they put him in front of the people and they cut off his hand and they cut off his, his arm and they cut off the other hand and arm and they cut off his limbs. They cut up his whole body. And they started to do it to the next person and the next one and the next one. And we were a few on this side and we, and we got away and we were like, maybe I think it was about five people that got away. And Cassie sat there. And every person that came to sit was a man from another village. And he heard the same story from each man. So his question was to these men, what happened here? How did this happen? You know, because these men also said that these young men that did this, they came from, they, they came from their area and some of them were even in the church with them. Some of them were even in the, in, 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 a week or two ago in the church in that village. And they caused this. Now the answer that, that Cassie received from how did this happen? Such profound answer. Satan came to earth was the answer. You see, these men, these people understood one thing. And that is that these young men, their hearts were captured by Satan. And many of them, even maybe most of them, came from a fatherless background. They lived without fathers. They lived a broken life and they didn't grow up with, with the discipline of a father, with the love of a father in the house. And it caused them to become young men that was looking for something, looking for leaders, looking um, for other groups. And Satan captured their hearts and he caused them with their brokenness to become people that can kill easily. 
He was, he was, he, w- he was so taken about it that he, that he, that he wrote a book. He wrote a course. The world needs a father. And you can read about this in, in his book, The World Needs a Father. What is your doctrine? What is your doctrine? What is your teaching? What is, well, how do you live towards people of another race or people from another race that, that do these things? Paul writes in Ephesians 6, and he says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Friends, we must help our people to see this. We must help our people as kingdom people, as Christians, as believers, that that we live from another perspective, from another world, from another kingdom, and that we are here on earth, on God's mission, and we've got the Holy Spirit with us that is guiding us in this, and we must help our people to have a a revelation of an understanding of the evil forces of darkness, the spiritual forces, and this fight between light and darkness. We must help our people to have an understanding in themselves. But it starts with us. It starts with me and you. We must have the correct uh, um, gospel we must have the correct doctrine we must have the correct revelation regarding this and we must ask each other do we believe the full gospel do we live from that place of understanding God's heart for all people as the church I believe it's so important that we understand fully understand not only God's heart for me and that he died for my sins but that God did this for every person on this planet. Do we as the church represent Jesus well in this time? Do we present the gospel well? Because our lives as Christians surely is an act of the gospel. People must experience the gospel. It must be real to them when they experience Christians, when they experience the church when they experience our coming together, when they experience us when we go and give out food, when they experience us in the street, when, 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 when we make a mistake with a car, people must still experience. How does grace and love work? And some of us, I believe God still wants to work. God still wants to change our perspective. And sometimes our perspective is narrow. Sometimes we still need a greater revelation of, of God's love. We see this even um, with Peter. You know, Peter is, is, was, a, was a Jew and, and Peter was one of the disciples, the close ones to Jesus. And he was this great apostle that stood up on the day of Pentecost and he was the one that preached the gospel. He's the one that got that revelation out of that upper room when the Holy Spirit fell on them. When he, he was the one that struggled with understanding, you know, he was the one that deserted Jesus. He was the one that, 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 that didn't understand what Jesus was about when he, when he cut off that man's ear. You know, he was, he wanted to physically fight. And Jesus had to take him through stages. And there was another stage that he needed for him because he wanted to enlarge Peter's ministry. You know, Peter was the one that when he stood up on that day on Pentecost, 3,000 people um, uh, became uh, believers. And the church started and Jerusalem, um, the Jerusalem church was just growing. But God had something more for him. God had to, had to show him even more. And we see that in Acts 10. We see in Acts 10 how, 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 how God comes to him and he shows him something. And in Acts 10 we see where Peter is, is, is praying and he becomes hungry and then he goes and he goes to prepare to eat. And as he was just going, then God suddenly shows him something. And, and, he sh- and he saw in his mind's eye this picture of a white sheet, a big white sheet coming down from heaven. And, and he saw how this white sheet was filled with wild animals, wild birds. And he was hungry at that stage. And God said to him, Peter, kill and eat. And being a Jew, Peter said, Lord, I will not touch something that's unholy or unclean. And the Lord spoke to Peter and the Lord said to him, For I have never eaten anything common or unclean, Peter says. And God spoke to him and said, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. 
God was speaking to Peter. He wanted to show him that God loved all people, all nations. And then God took him through this, this process of really seeing that it's God that's leading him. So he, he, so he said, there's going to be men that's going to knock on your door. And the next moment they were there and Peter went with them. And we know that what happened at that moment also in Caesarea was that Cornelius was there. And Cornelius was this devout man, this devout person that was God-fearing. He prayed often. He did good works. His, his household was also like that. You know, this man... He could move you as being a Christian. But he never heard of Jesus. And God saw how this man lived. And God came and an angel came and, and spoke to Cornelius and said, God has seen your life. You have to call Peter to come and speak to you. So, and that's why he sent men to Peter to go and get Peter so that he can come and, and tell them what he has on his heart. So here comes Peter and Peter walks into this room filled with people. And then he had the revelation. Because God showed him the sheet with all these wild animals. And God led him to this place through men that was knocking and telling him how Cornelius um, heard God speak to him and God sent them here. And and, and so he was followed them back 50 plus kilometers from Joppa to Caesarea and he got into this room and wow, here these people are sitting and Cornelius tells him how God has had appeared to him and spoken to him. And then um, Peter says the following, when he saw the people, you know, when he, when, he, when he saw the people and he saw the expectation on these people, he says the following, I perceive, and that is Acts 10 verse 34. It says here, then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Verse 35, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works Righteousness is accepted by Him. What an incredible um, witness of to Peter to just see this and 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 his and his and his and his own understanding of God's love and 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 God's grace towards all nations in that moment was changed. And we see how He changed. God for God. All lives matter, friends. All lives matter. And we must teach our people, in the words of Paul further, in in Galatians 2 verse 28, where he says, For there is no more Greek, there is no more Jew, there is no more slave or free, there is no more man or woman in God's eyes. Or should we teach our people, in Jesus' words it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son, so whoever believe will not perish, but will be saved will have eternal life, whoever. All lives matter to God. Our fight, friends, as the church, as Christians, are not against people. Our fight is against the forces of darkness. Our fight is also not a fight with, with weapons. It's a spiritual fight. And that's why prayer is so important in our lives. Because it's in prayer where we fight, as Paul says in Ephesians 6, that we must pray at all times. We must intercede. We must cry out to God as we, as we stand in our, in, our, in our armor, the spiritual armor. See, we must help our people in the area where we live. We must help our people to see that God loves all people. It doesn't matter who they are, what they do, how they, how, they, how they live towards us, how they live towards the church, how they live towards other people. You see, we must as a church see what God sees. We must understand how God sees lost sons and daughters that He loves. And we bring that love towards people in the way that we live, in the way that we live out our doctrine, in the way that we teach our people. I want to end with a story of a man called Stefan Skutsier, who, was, who is known as the White Wolf. This man was the guy who planted bombs in, in Wooster in 1996 in the ShopRite shopping center. And, and, and this man was, 
his intent was with three other friends was to kill as many black people as he could. So he went this day and they planted two bombs and the bombs went off and only four people died. And 76 people was injured. And, and Stephans said afterwards, I felt so bad that only four people died. I wanted so many people to die that day. So Stephans could see was the first terrorist in the new government in 1996. He was the first white man, the first white terrorist towards a, a, a black government. And he was put in jail for 40 years. But God loves Stephans Kutsia. God loves people who are lost. And as Stephans Kutsia was, was in prison for many years, God started to work in him. God sent a lady, a lady that loved Jesus, and a lady that, that, was, that showed Jesus' love towards people in prison, and, and one day she approached the fans and she handed to him a, 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 um, a book with, with the good news in, with a good message in. And the fans could see her receive this book and he threw it in the dustbin. He said, I don't want to have anything to do with God. But God loves him. And the years went on and, 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 and Stefan Skutsia decided to do a course that they presented in the prison. And, and there's this course that some of you might know of. It's restorative justice. And it's a course that, that helps people to, to, to restore the injustices that they have done. And Stefan decided to do this course. You know, there's, there are benefits if you do certain courses in prison. And he decided to do this course. And, and as he got into the room where this course was even presented the first day, this same lady walked in. And Stefan was a little bit unsure if he wanted to do this now. But he decided to go through with it. But each time when she prayed, he went out of the room because he doesn't want to have anything to do with God. But God is amazing, friends. And God used this lady in such an incredible way. Because one day she told her story. And as she told her story, listen how incredible God is in the detail of our lives. That's why we must never question God. Why is He sending me to this and that place? Will He do something there? And in this moment, this lady shared her testimony and this lady was in the same orphanage as a child than Stephans could see her. And that connected Stephans to her. That It opened up this heart towards this lady. And this lady was instrumental to lead Stephans to the Lord Jesus. One night while still struggling with the Lord, and, you know, and he said to the Lord, I'm angry to you. I'm angry to you, um, uh, 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 Lord, because you took away my mother and my father. And I ended up in an orphanage. You see, when Stephans was three years old, his mother one day gave him a few cents to go and buy sweets at a local shop. And as he came back, his mother was gone. She left him and he never saw her. His dad was an alcoholic, so he ended up in an orphanage. And God used th that moment to connect into this lady. So he came out of that and, you know, he said, Lord, I'm so angry of you with you. And the Lord showed him Matthew 5, 23. And he said, when you come to the altar and you bring your offering to me, but you know that you have something against your brother. I want you to put down your offering and I want you to go and make right with your brother to restore what is not right. And Stephans knew that God was speaking to him to go and restore the injustice that he has done, to ask forgiveness. And the Lord opened up the door that he could, through the, the um, minister of, of, of uh, correctional services, he could go and, and they could arrange for him to meet with people that was that was victims of his crimes. And Stephans had the opportunity to walk into um, uh, hall, halls where people came together and, and he asked forgiveness. And he said, you know that you have done really something long, wrong in life if a thousand people pitch up when you want to ask people forgiveness. And Stephans had the opportunity to look each person in their eye and, and ask them forgiveness and to hug them as they gave him forgiveness. By his own testimony, it's only one lady that they didn't want to forgive him. And there's a bit more to the story. But the point is here, that is God's heart. 
God wants to reconcile sinners to Himself. And God loved Stephans and He restored him as a son. And now Stephans could see us. Is, is the white wolf going around in South Africa? There's even a book available. You can go online and find the book. And Stephans is someone that tells of the love of God that restores men to Himself. Even men that was racist like him. He was a super Afrikaner, Stephans could see. And God changed his heart and now he's one that reconciles people to God. And that is who we are. That is who we are as Christians. That is what we should live out. We are people that reconcile people to God. But we must live in that place first. And I believe that this is the most important, the greatest message for the church of today. That we must reconcile all people to God and not miss the opportunity that we have in this moment as the mission of the church to go out and to live out a reconciled heart with God and reconciliation towards other people. May God bless you as you take this message and it speaks to your heart and you go out and each person you see just love with the love of Jesus and become like Him, purposeful in the mission to not miss, to live out the love of God as He gave to you. It's also for other people. Thank you very much.